Welcome to the demonstration of NetSuite MRP. In this video, I'll demonstrate the three phases of cycle planning, refreshing the planning repository with current data, submitting the supply plan, and reviewing the output in the planner's workbench. I'm logged in as the administrator, and we'll start with the planning repository. This is where we can run a complete item refresh and let it run overnight once a week, or we could run net changes at any desired frequency. This will pick up item planning parameter changes. The supply plan can be submitted from here or the supply plan page. Next, the supply planning event log confirms the last time the data was updated. Here we have at 3.02 p.m. Knowing that we have the most up-to-date item information, we click on View Results to head over to the Planning Workbench. Here we view all information about the items, such as corresponding supply and demand orders in the supply plan. We can also act on the results from the planning engine. Looking at the interface, the top panel gives us all the date information, our planning date range, date generated, and date refreshed. We can narrow the list using filters, user-defined item categories, or locations. We can adjust items on the supply chain by further filtering results by action type, like canceling an order, or rescheduling in or out. In the exception type list, we can select from the following predefined messages, which inform the planner about all challenges to the supply plan. For example, selecting items with no activity lists all items with no activity in the planning horizon. In the supply type list, we have it's the same options. For example, we can sort just by purchase orders and similarly for the demand type. As you see, all these selections are then netted out in our landing page. This top line is the summary and all of the numbers are hyperlinked. Let's look at supply. If we look at this on hand quantity, item A, Detroit Manufacturing. This quantity of 10 will be tagged to some sort of demand. By clicking on the pegging tree for on-hand quantity, we see that half of this quantity is going to safety stock and the other half is to planned transfer order number 14. That transfer order is pegged to the items demand plan in the Miami Distribution Center. The demand in our Miami distribution is tied to safety stock for Detroit manufacturing and NetSuite keeps everything moving between locations. I'll go ahead and close this window. Clicking onto our demand tab, we see safety stock requests up at the top. And if we scroll down to our first planned transfer order, number 119. Let's open up this pegging tree here. We can see item G is made up of items H and I. These are coming in with a planned purchase order. They will be manufactured at Pittsburgh Manufacturing based on this planned work order. After manufacturing is complete, we have a planned transfer order to Miami Distribution and item G will then flow through to the planned transfer order and end up at Orlando Retail. This is all part of our eight location supply plan. Let's close this demand and return to the summary. Take a look at assembly item D. It's made up of items C and E. We have two actions we can take. NetSuite is telling us to consider rescheduling this unfirmed work order, rescheduling it out one day. It's also suggesting to cancel the unfirmed work order because there are no future requirements. 
If I agree with these procedures, I click the boxes and select Perform Selected Actions. Thank you for watching this demonstration.